At this time, I call the January 14th meeting of the County Commission to order. I have my pastor, the Reverend James James of Martin's Crossroads Church, to give the invocation. Following the invocation, I've asked Commissioner Clyde to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we gather here this evening to conduct the business, Lord, of this county, I thank you for the opportunity, first of all, to stand here before these leaders and this people to call upon you for wisdom and, and for guidance. It's a privilege and it's an honor, and Lord, you know, it's not one that I, I take lightly. And now, Lord, I ask that you would visit us tonight, that you would reveal your will and your, your progress, your peace and prosperity for the great people, Lord, of, of this county. Show our leaders, Lord, your purpose. Enlighten them tonight to allow them to know, Lord, how to accomplish your goals and the tasks that are at hand. I ask, Lord, you direct their thoughts and direct their words. And, and God, I pray that you direct their decisions in such a way that not only is it beneficial to the people, but God, that their actions might be according to your divine will. Give them knowledge of the situations at hand. And then, Lord, I pray you give them a supernatural wisdom to allow them to know what to do with the knowledge that they have as they will face uh, having to make decisions and deal with situations. And I pray, Lord, they'd be unified together in making the best possible decisions that would be carried out effectively. And Lord, may we discover tonight your wisdom and be diligent as we seek after you. I pray, Lord, that they would be sensitive to your voice and God, that you would give them the patience to wait upon you as they do your work. I pray now, God, tonight for your blessing upon the commissioners, Mr. Larry Collins and Mr. Stan Tankersley, Mr. Cooper Clyde, and Mr. Brian Henderson, and of course, the chairman of the board, Mr. Walker Norman. Lord, we desire your glory and your blessing in all that is done here tonight. And just before I close out, we're dealing, Lord, with an unprecedented time in, in our lives with this pandemic. Many are lonely, many are afraid, confused, concerned. So many things have happened, Lord, in a negative way due to this. People have lost loved ones. And tonight we are cognizant and we recognize that. We ask your blessings upon them. And we ask, Lord, that you would send this pandemic back where it came from. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Thank you, Reverend James, for being with us. We are a little different again tonight, as you can tell, because of the COVID-19 issues that we have. It's the reason that we are sitting the way that we are sitting and you are sitting the way that you are sitting. The courtroom has been taken care of. We don't know how long we'll be meeting this way, but we'll do it until we feel like things are going. The courthouse will be closed, I think, tomorrow or Tuesday when we come back after the holiday. And um, masks will be worn and the doors will be locked except the front door. You can enter the front door if you're coming in to do the business in the courthouse. Commissioner Henderson, Commissioner Collins, Commissioner Clyde, Commissioner Tankersley, Clerk McKellar, County Attorney Jackson, Department Heads, and my fellow Lincoln Counties. It gives me great pleasure to present my 29th State of the County Address. Tonight, we all welcome a new member of the Board of Commissioners, which is the governing authority of Lincoln County Government. Commissioner Tankersley, as you begin this awesome responsibility as a county commissioner, I want you to know that this board, the clerk, the county attorney, and our eight department heads, as well as myself, look forward to working with you and stand ready to help you in any way we can. 
I realized that after several days of training in Athens in early December, which was presented by the Association County Commissioners of Georgia and the University of Georgia's Carl Vincent Institute of Government, as well as a day-long orientation by the county. You are ready, willing, and able to begin your duties as a county commissioner representing this four. I am. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and honor to serve the people of this county as chairman today as it was when I was first elected in 1981. I've enjoyed working with each commission these past few years, and I look forward to continuing to work with each of you in the future as we undertake the business of those we serve. Tonight, as always, I want to recognize our constitutional officers, department heads, county employees, for your leadership and dedicated service to carry out your duties for the citizens we serve. I would also like to commend the men and women who provide our citizens with safety and protection, whether you are in law enforcement, emergency medical services, firefighters, rescue, or 911 dispatchers. I want you to know we back the blue. The Department of Public Works under the direction of Director Robbie Seymour performed 1,035 building inspections and issued 604 building permits for a total of $14,539,880, which includes 43 new residential permits, representing $9,724,332. We saw an increase in new housing up from 37 in 2019, and the average house built in Lincoln County in 2020 was $226,147. I would like to congratulate Lincoln County voters on approving the Transportation Improvement Act in the June election for another 10 years beginning January 2022. Let me remind you of what this Transportation Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax of approximately $18 million will do for Lincoln County over the next decade beginning in 2022. We will resurface Chamberlain Ferry, Double Branches, Calvin Kennedy, Masir, and Potterstown Roads. And we will pave McGill and Goldman Johnson Roads. Also included in these $9.6 million is a traffic circle at Clyde's Crossing at the intersection of Georgia Highway 47, the Augusta Highway, and Georgia Highway 220, with Lincoln County putting in $2 million from t splash funds, and the Georgia Department of Transportation putting in another $2 million, for a total of $4 million. Also included in t splash is another $8.4 million to be used for resurfacing, paving, and patching roads included in the county's over 200 miles of public roads, as well as purchasing equipment to maintain the county's road system. The commissioners voted in February of last year to hire an engineering firm to provide a scope of work and fee proposal for the Georgia Department of Transportation so the county would be eligible to file an application with DOT for a transportation alternative grant in the amount of $1.8 million. Counties that applied for this grant have to be under 40,000 population for the minimum grant of not less than $1 million. With the counties putting up 20% match, which can come from our T-Splosh funds. This grant will curb, gutter, sidewalks, street lights, and trees that will tie into the traffic circle at Clyde's Crossing, going southeast down Georgia Highway 47, 
for approximately 1.1 miles. The Water and Wastewater Division began construction of approximately $2 million project funded by the United States Department of Agriculture, which includes the expansion of county water into Montego Point, Cherokee Country Club, Thompson Highway, and Lewis Family Road areas. This project consists of 16,900 linear feet of water lines, four new wells that will provide additional water supply to the county's water system, and approximately 500 new touch read meters to replace the old meters that are hand read. <clears throat> With this 500, then the county's entire water system will now have touch readers and we don't have to get out and do it by hand. In 2020, the county also applied with the United States Department of Agriculture and the Georgia Environmental Facilities Authority for $4 million to expand the water system from Low Coat to Woodlawn, down Salem Church Road into Hidden Harbor and Forest Lake Estates. This will consist of 32,000 linear feet of water lines to provide safe drinking water and fire protection to those areas. Several months ago, the commissioners hired a consultant to work with us to find grants to expand the county's wastewater system down the Augusta Highway from Blackjack to True Luck Road and Deerfield Estate Subdivision. Overlook Road, Price Road, and Cherokee Country Club Subdivision. Ashmore Barden Road to Cherokee Creek to Cherokee Retreat Subdivision to Plantation Point Road and into the Plantation Point subdivision. The estimated cost of this project is approximately $13 million. It is the county's position that with this addition of wastewater, we can experience tremendous growth in the southeastern part of our county. We will keep you all informed as the process continues. The Office of Emergency Services, OES, under Director Casey Broom, responded to 1,357 calls for services, including 54 fire rescue calls, and cared for over 150 COVID-19 patients. The E911 Center, under the direction of Sheriff Revere, received 25,034 incoming calls and 6,282 outgoing calls. Personnel in the OES completed a state-approved EMT class with six graduates from our staff. The Office of Emergency Services was present at the high school and other athletic events, as well as other events and festivals in order to support the county. OES received $2,175 non-competitive grant from the Georgia Trauma Commission to help offset the cost of medical supplies. They also received a $100,000 USDA grant loan for a new ambulance remount and a power lift stretcher. This was a 35% grant, 65% loan. Office of Emergency Services applied in July for 113,288 USDA grant loan for three state-of-the-art Tempest cardiac monitors for our ambulances. This application has been approved. Application was also made in November of 2020 for $181,998 USDA grant loan for the purchase of another new ambulance and a power lift stretcher, as well as a new patrol car for the Sheriff's Office. This application has been approved, pending funding. The Office of Emergency Services applied for $21,331 Firehouse Subs grant. Y'all continue to eat Firehouse Subs. For the purchase of three self-contained breathing apparatuses for the Office of Emergency Services firefighters. 
They received $5,000 from the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia, cancer prevention grant for the purchase of a washer extractor machine for the five turnout gear. OES created an ultraviolet UV light decontamination room to clean personal protection equipment and installed a UV light and high efficiency particulate air filtration system that runs through the heating and air conditioning system of our ambulances using funds from the county's allocation of CARES money. The Recreation Department under Director Glaze hosted mobile drives in conjunction with the Lincoln County Food Pantry and the Golden Harvest Food Bank of Augusta with the assistance of many volunteers who provided much needed food to our citizens. They also hosted Smiles of Joy Toy Drive and networked with the local rural legends Chevy Truck Club to provide Christmas gifts to children in Lincoln County. The Recreation Department also worked with the Lincoln and Lincoln County Chamber of Commerce to make possible once again our annual Christmas parade. The Recreation Department saw several upgrades at the Curry Carbon Complex, which included the conversion of the swimming pool into a first class splash pad at the Jesse Gumby Aquatics Facility. The upgrading of Lincoln County Family Connection offices, paving of the roads that lead to the new Lincoln County Agricultural Building, which houses the offices of the, United, of the University of Georgia County Extension and 4-H, and seal coating and striping all existing roads in the complex, as well as the walking tracks, tennis and basketball courts, and cameras and additional lighting were installed at the complex to improve security and safety. Under the direction of the County Extension Agent Robin Stewart, along with Director Seymour, we completed the county's first phase of our new agricultural building, which allowed the county agent's office to move into the building located at the Curry Carbon Complex on Roland York Drive in September 2020. This building was constructed with grant funds at a cost of $338,000, with all funds coming to the county as grants from the United States Department of Agriculture and the state of Georgia. 200,000 from the state, 138,000 from USDA. And we would like to thank Senator Lee Anderson and Representative Tom McCall for their help in acquiring the money from the state. The County Extension Office had face-to-face -face contact with over 2,300 people in 2020 on-site consultants with 47 clients and received three state awards through the Georgia Association of County Agricultural Agents. 300 students were enrolled in the 4-H program. The office hosted a hobby flock seminar series which had 17 attendees that attended in person and 248 registered virtually. They won first place poster at the Northeast District they hosted a horse owners virtual seminar series with 286 registered to attend and a sport fish pond management program with 14 attendees. The library under the direction of Director Shirley Dawkins received new computers for the computer lab and opened the Dover Partridge Annex Room September through November for distant learning students. A new computerized LED sign replaced the old sign in front of the library, and new cameras were installed around the building. The finance director, under the direction of Director Ernie Doss, has provided me with the 2020 year-end balances for all funds. The general fund, $2,950,633. Payroll, $72,452. Emergency fund, 295920 
Drug Education Fund, $32,790. E911 Fund, $134,790. Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax Fund, $571,362. Solid Waste Fund, $627,051. T Splash Fund, $657,017. Water Fund, $172,174. And the Water Reserve Fund, $224,716. The FY20 General Fund budget of Lincoln County was $7.257, $7,257,000. The FY21 fund was $6,876,638. As we begin our new year of 2021, I am proud to announce that the county's financial conditions are in excellent shape. I am honored once again for the privilege to serve as your chairman. And I look forward to working with these commissioners over the next several years as we work together to make Lincoln County a better place to call home. May God bless you, and may God bless these United States of America. Thank you. Now we will get to our agenda. Is there a motion on item number five of the agenda that we approve the minutes of the previous meetings? So moved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion. Is there a second? I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion made by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, hears none. All in favor of the motion, let me know by saying aye. Aye. Approval of the agenda. Is there a motion that we approve the agenda as printed? I so will make this motion. Second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried and the agenda is approved. Item number seven is something that we do, I think, every four years, is what, it's, what it says. This appointment of, uh, the appointment of Sherry McKellar to remain as the clerk to the Lincoln County Board of Commissioners. They are motion. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Who made that motion? Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Tanksley. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like <coughs> sign. Motion is carried. Item number eight. Of our, of our county attorney, the appointment of Mr. Ben Jackson to continue on as the county's attorney. I make the motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Clyde is there a second? Second. Seconds by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion to retain the county attorney? Going once. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign, the motion is carried. The appointment of the vice chairman. That motion to we appoint a vice chairman. Mr. Chairman, I would nominate uh, Commissioner Clyde. Have a motion to appoint Commissioner Clyde. Is there any other nominations? Chair hears none. Is there a second to the motion by Commissioner Collins to appoint Commissioner Clyde the vice chairman? I second, Mr. Chairman. The second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Congratulations, Commissioner Clyde. You want this tonight or you want to wait? No, sir, let's wait. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. I guess I do. <laughs> Thank you. Item number 10, appointments of the department heads. Is there a motion that we have? I'm, let's do these collectively. I think we can do that, can't we? Let's the, we will be recommending that we appoint Reappoint Director Casey Broom as the OES Director. Is that objection that we do these collectively? No. 
No objection, we'll proceed. Recreation Director, Director Glaze. The Finance Director, Director Doss. Public Works Director, Director Seymour. Leisure Services Director, Nancy Blunt. The Library Director, Carrie Pardon. As you know, Ms. Dawkins has been with the county for, I think, 26 years as the library director. She is uh, retiring, I think, effective January 21st, I believe. Is that right? 31st. 31st. Okay. I didn't miss it for 10 days. So she will be retiring the library advisory board and Director Dawkins has requested, as you all know, that we appoint um, Carrie Pardon to be the director of Lincoln County Library beginning February the 1st, and our IT director, who's back there now, Director Dockery, as the county's eight department heads. Is there a motion that they be reappointed for another term? So moved. There a second. Second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Tankersley, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. The motion's carried. The clerk will have your form to sign. Our eight department heads signs the form saying they work at the pleasure of the Board of Commissioners. If they don't do right, we can get rid of them. So I will ask the clerk to see to it that these are signed. Those that will not sign, let me know. 2021, nope. Yep, item 11 is the committee appointments. Lincoln County government has four standing committees made up of two commissioners. One is chairman, one is vice chairman, and the chairman of the board of commissioners is an ex officio member of the four standing committees. I would like to appoint tonight, put this down, because it's made some changes. We made some changes because we have a new commissioner. The finance committee will continue on with Commissioner Larry Collins as chairman, Commissioner Cooper Clyde as vice chairman. Recreation will be Commissioner Brian Henderson as chairman and Commissioner Stan Tankersley as vice chairman. Public Works will be Commissioner Cooper Clyde as chairman and Commissioner Brian Henderson as vice chairman. General Government Committee will be chaired by Commissioner Tankersley and Vice Chair will be Commissioner Larry Collins. That will be the appointment of the committees for the next two years. And I look forward to serving with all of you. Okay, with that said, we're going to move right along and get into a little part that we have to do. Our agenda is set by county ordinance that says how we have to start the agenda off and this is the procedure that it has to go. Item number 12 is departmental reports, the Office of Emergency Services, Director Broom. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, you have my written report. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. The only addition uh, that I will make, uh, sadly, is an update uh, to the COVID-19 situation in Lincoln County. As you know, this report was uh, prepared on Monday. Uh, as of today, uh, the total case count, according to the Department of Public Health, is 377 known COVID cases in Lincoln County um, and 15 deaths. Um, we also have a 14-day running total up to today. Going from today back 14 days, 43 new cases. Uh, that information was made available to me at 3.30 this afternoon. That's the only addition that I have to my report unless there are questions. Okay, you've heard the report from Commission, I mean from Director Broom. Is there any questions by any member of the board to the director? If not, we accept your report and we'll move on. Thank you to item 12B, it's the Recreation Department. We have several directors. I know two that are not here tonight, one due to COVID, one due to a death in the family. Uh, and that's Director Bolton. Uh, I think Director Seymour, are you taking the, no you're not, I'm sorry. Okay, the Recreation Department, you have it. <laughs> you don't want to give that report, do you? 
We, you have the report of the uh, Recreation Department in your, in your book. <clears throat> if you have any questions, get in touch with Director Glade. Uh, the next one is the Finance Department, Director Doss. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, you have my report. Uh, the only thing I'd like to uh, point out in the report, you'll notice that uh, payroll seems a little high for December. We had three payrolls in December, so we didn't give out a bunch of raises. We just had to do it three times. That's I don't want to give but one check. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Elected officials only get paid once a month. <laughs> okay, are there any questions directed to us on the finances? You have all of his report in your book. If you have any questions, just contact him. Thank you. Item 12D is the Public Works Department, Director Seymour. Chairman, members of the board, um, you have my written report for Public Works. I uh, don't really have anything to add to those unless you have questions. I'll be more than happy to um, answer those. Um, just one real quick note. I thought the chairman um, spoke about it in his state of the county. We did have 43 new residential dwellings um, <coughs> permits issued in 2020, which is the highest that I've seen in my 18 year tenure with the county. Um, so hopefully we'll continue to grow. So um, everything seems to be on the up and up, but I, I don't have anything to add unless you have questions. Any questions, direct to say more. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Clyde. Director, uh, on, the, on the new permits. Yes, sir. Three. Uh, is, have you got any subdivisions planned? Are you hearing anything? Are you getting things through your office? Or just people buying land? And Nobody has talked to me land. about any subdivision at this point in time. Um, we are seeing um, some record numbers in, in property sales throughout the county over the last probably three or four months. Um, um, so we know that, that sales are, are way up in Lincoln County. Um, whether it be home sales or land sales, but uh, people seem to be buying a good bit of land in Lincoln County right now. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Let me make a general comment. On the, on the residential building permits, I know that don't sound like a whole lot. 43 Columbia County was probably 1,100. But if you put it in perspective to the ones that we check around with and do, and he did at the end of the year, the first of the year, for the first time in the last four years, McDuffie County exceeded Lincoln County in new residential building permits by 12. Uh, for the last four years, we, we did more new residential building permits in McDuffie County. Still, if you look at our neighbors to the west, Wilkes, we did 43 new houses being built in the county. Wilkes was eight. So if you, if you look at, and you can go to anywhere in the CSRA and compare them, and we're going to probably be higher than most of them. But, but um, I think what's happened in Wilkes County, uh, McDuffie County, the same thing's happening in Lincoln County, particularly on the Harlem side. They are moving over into McDuffie County in the dairy area. So that might be the reason that they are shot up. But they had 55 building permits this year, the hour 43 in them. And, we don't like to get beat, but we did. Anyway, <laughs> any other questions, Director Seymour? Okay, we're going to move right along. The reason we got some people in here, you know, normally we have more people than this, but I guess the pandemic's keeping people out, or they knew I'd have a long-winded state of the county, and they didn't want to listen to it. So anyway, we're a little bit short, but we got, we got, we got good quality here anyway. The old farmer used to say, Mr. Herbert, we got some good stock here. The members of this board know exactly what's going on because we have a we had a two and a half hour work session the last Thursday afternoon that we go over most of this stuff that we formally vote on tonight. We don't vote at a work session. Mr. Herbert Powell's sitting back there and he thinks that he is here to give a speech. In fact, he went over a little bit of it with me this morning just because he didn't know no better. That's not really the reason, Herbert, that you are here. Your wife has fooled you. <laughs> we have talked in the state of the county and for a long time you read the papers of, of our new agricultural building at the complex. Four or five years ago when I was running for re-elect to, to come back into office in 2016, 
Some of the people in the county ask me, Commissioner Tankers, your daddy being one of them, if you get elected, we want a county agent. We don't like Lincoln County not having a county agent. We went to work on that in 2017 and the General Assembly appropriated the money in 2018. This commission appointed the county's portion of that money to get us a new county agent. Robin Stewart, I think, is doing an excellent job. She's a young lady that is now our extension director. Sometimes it's good to have youth because they on fire and she's getting things going and it's just a shame that we're in the situation that we in all over the world really but this pandemic has, has crippled her to what I think her abilities will be as time comes. But she, she's here now and in the future. Mr. Herbert Powell came to Lincoln County as the County Extension Director somewhere around 1985. Prior to that, he, he, he served with the extension for a good many years as the extension director in Wilkes County. Mr. Powell served us very well. He was very well known across the state. He brought a lot of new programs, influenced the lives of many, many people through 4-H and through the cattlemen's the steer shows and the things that he did. I know personally, I was there a lot of those years that Herbert worked tirelessly for the agricultural community of our county. He served as our extension director for 16 years. I think from about two, 1985 to 2005 or something like that. Is that right? You can, I'm, I am, I am going to let you talk to us. I don't think you ought to. <laughs> Several people brought it to my attention that we need to do something for you, Herbert. And I just don't really know if, if, if we do it enough for what you've done for Lincoln County, but we want to, when I talk to these other four people sitting on this board, without a doubt, they wanted to do it. For those of you that are familiar with the Curry Carving Complex, it has gone from more of just a recreation facility into some other things. College was out of the gym for a while. Family Connection has gone into the old building. Uh, when, when Brian Tankersley, who acted as county agent for about 18 months, brought this, he planted the seed of this building out here. I want to give him the credit for that. But we have a nice new building out there that... Um, as I said, it's the first phase. The second phase of that building will be the show arena and the stalls to keep the animals in that you bring inside for a show arena. We hope to, to be able to bring that in at some point in time. Uh, part of this building, the Cattlemen's Association, the 4-H and other things will be able to use the backside of it and all the extension offices out there. And as I speak, we are working with the U.S. Department of Agricultural offices that serve Lincoln, Overthorpe, and Wilkes County House in Wilkes County. I've had the lady down to go out to the building, look at it, we have room, we have office space in there, hopefully. Hopefully we'll be able to work it out. We've offered to give it to them at no cost. All they got to do is come down, but we are asking them if they will send somebody to Lincoln County one day a week that will be out at the agricultural building in an office so you won't have to drive to Washington to get your food stamps for your cows and all this stuff. You, they'll come down here and you can get it because Commissioner Tanker is wearing out too many pickups. <laughs> but with all of that said, we have a new road out there that comes in and goes straight to the complex and there's some other things going out there too that we haven't even really talked about yet but it's going to be some other things some, uh, read last month's paper I think it was last month you see where we some, some trails and like an amphitheater and some things are going to be coming on them she's already secured some grant money for that and we're going to in kind some of it Director Seymour, would you bring that up here or just stop at the podium what we would like to do is we would like to to show our appreciation and our honor to Herbert Powell. 
by naming the road that goes to the new agricultural center, Herbert Powell Court. This sign will be placed up out there probably next Tuesday. And um, Herbert, we just want you to know the people of Lincoln County appreciate you, all the hard work you have done. And we wanted to, as the, as the commissioners of this county, to show you some appreciation on behalf of the people and to name this road for Herbert Powell. I see, that, of course, we all know Marcin's here. We can't see us with all that on. But, uh, you even got your brother-in-law to come see. Now, when you get an in-law to come be around, you, you've really done something. Amen. But Mac has driven from Dakota down here to be with you. And, of course, Nancy and her husband and... I can't see who that other one is. He blacked out too, but uh, I think it's a grandchild. Is that right? Uh, you, your grandchild's here. Uh, we, will let, we will let you know, Marcin, you and Herbert, when we get ready to do this so we can go out and get some pictures made of it for the paper and other things. But this will be done. This one is... Um, me, he and Marcin talk forever. I don't know anybody that talks longer than Marcin and Walker than the Beggs boys and our first cousins. So they uh, stay on the phone a lot. But anyway, uh, y'all really fooled me. Uh, and I'll just say that uh, the reason that I have as much interest in the barn and so forth was that uh, I had a county agent. Excuse me. Took a real interest in me. We were very cool. But he took an interest in me. I was able to go to college because of 4 H work and we had some scholarships and so forth. And it allowed me to do that. And I hope I've given back some that maybe I was taught and what I was, uh, you know, given through 4 H club work. And this barn is, is, is really great. I was chairman of the Wilkes County Barn up there, which is totally a livestock facility. It's the same with Guild and the other representatives got the money from the state somehow, some way. And then when we got to talking about this, we had Judy Ashley uh, uh, to come down and talk with us. And then I understand at that time, funds were cut off for the state. They couldn't hire, they couldn't do anything. But anyway, they finally came up with it. Walker worked with Judy Ashley, who was our district agent, to get the thing going again. And, we just appreciate you commissioners and all uh, doing what you've done to get this thing funded and hopefully we can get the livestock facility also finished for these kids. But for which it's been a world to me and thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Is there a motion that we name this road after Herbert Powell? Mr. Chairman, I would just sit it on and make that motion. A motion by Commissioner Clyde. We have a second by Commissioner Tanksley. Any other discussion? Chair, he is done. All in favor of the motion and the resolution that will follow the name of the road going to the new agriculture center, Herbert Powell Court. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried and you entered into the records that you have a road name for you.
Y'all welcome to stay if you want to. If you don't, kind of walk behind him and not right in front of him because this is video, Nancy. Uh, I don't even know whether y'all know this, but a lot of it goes on YouTube and it's on the county's website. So by the middle of next week, it'll be up and you'll be able to, if you got friends anyway, you, you, you want them in Jonesboro anyway, you can tell them to turn it on and look at it and they'll be able to see what, what took place here tonight. Okay, moving right along. Item 14 is a Tech and Civic Light Grant Director Dawes. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, at uh, the last, was last month, I believe it was last month, um, you approved for uh, Director Bolton to apply for a, another grant with the uh, Center for Tech and Civic Life uh, for uh, the 2021 runoff and our uh, and the audit, and we applied for a grant for $20,650. Uh, Director Bolton was notified on the 8th that the that they had awarded the grant to us, and we just need you to accept the grant. Uh, the grant is for $17,220 for reimbursement for our poll workers uh, and our election staff, $450 uh, for rent, $500 for personal protective equipment, $240 for deliveries, $240 for equipment pickup, uh, printing and postage, and the total is $20,650. Okay, is there a motion that we accept the grant for $20,650 from the Center of Tech and Civic Life? So moved. Is that a second? I second. Motion by, who second that? Motion by Commissioner Tankersley, second by Commissioner Henderson in discussion on the motion. There is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion's carried. Item number 15 is Timber Tax Ordinance, Director Seymour. Chairman, members of the board, I think you have in your uh, in your book a new copy of a proposed um, timber ordinance. Um, we took a look at this because the uh, state law actually changed for the way that um, timber harvesters have to notify uh, the county of timber harvesting operations in each and every county. And so um, we're charged to change our county ordinance uh, to meet those state law requirements. Um, the major changes in this ordinance are uh, the actual notification. Uh, it used to be that the harvester had to actually come in to uh, our office and apply for a permit and give notice that they were doing har harvesting operations. Uh, the new bill uh, uh, charges the Georgia Forestry Commission with developing a website um, that is cloud-based that harvesters can go online and make that notification and it notifies us when they have uh, operations in each and every county. Uh, the other part of it is, is that the, um, the bond requirements stay the same at $5,000, but the way you call those bonds in and, and what you can call it in for, and, and there's an appeal process that uh, is in there that, that was not in there originally. Um, these are all things that we talked about um, last week in our work session, and I think that uh, the rest of the doctors already got it uh, up on the county website under public notices. Uh, for the general public to um, look at, read over. Uh, this is not an ordinance that we um, are going to adopt tonight. Uh, it is going to take two readings. Um, and with that said, Chairman, I'll turn it over to you unless y'all have any questions for me. I'll be glad to answer those. I think you answered the questions last week. I asked County Attorney to start reading on the first reading of the, of the ordinance. Yes, Mr. Chairman. It will be entitled Timber Harvesting Ordinance, whereas the timber harvesting operations occur in Lincoln County, unincorporated portions of Lincoln County on a recurring basis, whereas the timber harvesting is an important component of the local economy in Lincoln County, providing revenue to landowners, business opportunities, and jobs from local residents. It is the intent of the governing authority of Lincoln County to facilitate this industry while at the same time protecting county infrastructure. Mr. Jackson. Yes, sir. If there's not any objection from members of the board, we, I'd like to suspend the reading. Is there an objection that we suspend the reading? Okay, no objection. We'll suspend the reading the first part of the reading as Director Seymour has said this will be up 
on the county website in the next few days for the public to go to and read. And it will actually be voted on at the February the 11th meeting of the county commissioners. We will have a portion of the reading again. But it's out there. If anybody wants to read the timber ordinance and has anything that they want to say, then they can be here at the next meeting before we take the vote on it. I direct anybody to talk to Commissioner Henderson. He's in the timber business. He knows all about it. <laughs> okay, with that said, thank you. Yes, we sir. will move right on to the Martex Message Board. Director Seymour. Uh, yes, sir. Um, this is also an item we discussed at our work session, but the county has um, several projects uh, in the works and that are coming forward here in the near future. We'll talk about one of those, I think, a couple items down. Um, that requires us to give some public notification of the work on some roads. And so uh, in this process, um, we have asked that, um, that y'all take a look at um, purchasing a uh, metrics, a full metrics message board. And, and for those that don't know, that's the, the big signs that got LED signs that says lane change in ahead that you'll see on, on road construction projects. Uh, and so I have provided you guys with um, three different quotes um, and I am recommending that we uh, purchase this um, piece of equipment out of t Sploss dollars uh, from Peachtree Equipment in the amount of $18,200. Um, I have already got, been in touch with them and they have given me a loaner um, board um, so that we can uh, go ahead and start advertising for one of those projects coming up. But my recommendation is, is that uh, y'all approve us to uh, the county to purchase one through Peachtree Equipment at the price of $18,200. Did you say we already have a loan assignment that's flashing down at yes, Gillip Bowl with Maxim Road? Yes, that's sir. good. Notifying the people. I think Lincoln Journal, I know I noticed something in the paper. And she's going to do something. We've, we've talked about this, and we all, for me, what we're doing is they are mostly we accept the recommendation of public works director to purchase this through T Splice Funds, $18,200 from Peach Creek. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Is that second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman, I was just going to say, Commissioner like, Clyde. It would cost us like 2000 every time we read it. Yeah. Or... We, have, we actually have two major projects coming up that we're going to have to do some, um, some public notification on. And, and so we wanted to advertise for a month apiece, you know, leading up to uh, the actual construction. And uh, me and the chairman both looked into a rental uh, item, and it was going to cost us a little over two thousand dollars per month to rent one. So we were going to spend, you know, upwards of four to five thousand dollars for rental. So we figured we might better take a look at this to where we can, and we can use it for other things too. Like uh, the chairman said, in the state of the uh, county, you know, when they have food uh, giveaways out at the rent department, we can use those if the sheriff needs it. We can set it up for him if he's got something going on. So we can use it for uh, just about anything um, that the county's doing. Okay, the any other questions, Director Seymour? If not, all in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like, sign, motion is carried. Get your sign. Yes, sir. You already have, I imagine. Yes, you? sir. All right, item 17 is 2021 LMEG list, Director Seymour. Yes, sir. Um, as you know, um, every year we have to apply uh, to the Georgia Department of Transportation for our um, uh, funding allotment uh, for the LMEG, which stands for Local Maintenance Improvement Grant. Uh, and in that process, we have to specify what roads uh, we're going to spend those dollars on. Um, so our allotment for this year is uh, 316000 and a, a few dollars. It's 316000 which is a little bit less than what it was last year. Last year it was three forty-five, so it's a little bit less than this year. So I want to go ahead and apply for those funds, and in doing so I have to have approval from the Board of Commissioners for the list of those roads. And so I've supplied you with a list of two roads uh, to do um, surface treatment on. Uh, just like we did White Rock Road and, and Amity Woodlawn Road. And those two roads are Loveless Road for uh, 4.15 miles and the cost of about $166,000. Uh, Metersville Road uh, of 6.85 miles uh, at $274,000 for a total of $440,000 and 11 miles of road. 
Now, we don't have to spend uh, the extra money on those roads. We, we can dial it back to spend just what GDOT gives us plus our 10% match if we want to, uh, or we can go ahead and do these two roads and match it with t sploss money or floss money when we get to that point. We haven't gotten to the point where we know exactly how much each road's going to cost, but when we do that, we'll come back to you um, to decide wh which road we're going to do and how much of each road we're going to do. So, um, anyway, I just need approval for the list so I can go ahead and make um, application to GDOT for the money. Is there a motion that we accept the recommendation of the Public Works Director and put, add these two roads to the 21 LMIG? So moved, Mr. Chairman. That's second. second. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? There is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Item number 18, Gillibo Road Culvert Replacement Director Seymour. Yes, sir. This is, this is an item that's not going to take um, action from this board tonight. It's more of an informational, um, not only to you, of course, we talked about it at the work session, but to the general public that are, that are home watching in, in the newspaper. Um, Gillibo Road has a creek um, that crosses Gillibo Road um, just before you get to the split of Gillibo and Wells Creek Road. Uh, that pipe has been deteriorating for some time. Uh, started really back in the summer uh, when we had some heavy rains and some flooding. And so the pipe needs to be replaced. Um, and, and we've kind of purposely waited until this time of the year for a couple of reasons. One, the traffic from the lake's not so much on that road and going to the boat ramp and second homes for people, they're not visiting as much. So um, we have set a date um, of January the 28th. Uh, we will start the replacement. The road will have to be closed completely so there will no, be no in and out traffic. Um, I'm working um, in conjunction with Director um, Broom on emergency services and, and he he knows where we're at and what we're doing in the plan. Um, and so this is more of a, of a public service announcement for the people, uh, but we will be replacing that road. I have um, already sent out letters to each and every homeowner on Gillibo Road, Wells Creek Drive, and on Lake Drive. Um, any piece of property that touches those roads, whether there's a home on it or it's bare property, we sent them a letter. Uh, we've also sent a letter to the Lincoln Journal. I think it was in the paper this week. Um, I think it's going to be in there again uh, in the upcoming days. We also have the message board um, on Gillibo Road. As soon as you turn off of Maxim Road, there's a message board there uh, that plainly states road closing January 28th and then the second page says start at 8 a.m. Uh, we're going to start at 8 a.m. so that the people come, coming out and going to work can get out and the school bus can run. Um, and hopefully we'll be through four to six hours, which will put us in the time frame for that school bus and people coming home where they can get back in. Um, so we're doing everything that we can uh, for no public notification, um, and we'll do everything that we can to get people in and out um, as safely as we can. We will also have um, some trucks standing by with Crush and Run in case we do have an emergency in there that we can dump that rock into that ditch and get emergency vehicles in and out um, to take care of that, and we'll just have to dig it back out and set us back. But we, we've got a plan in place. Um, so this is just uh, informational purposes to let you know kind of what we're doing, when we're doing it, and how we're doing it. Thank you. Any yes, questions, sir. Director Seymour? If not, we move on to item 19. Is the uh, LGRMS Firefighter Cancer Awareness Grant Director Free? Chairman, as we discussed uh, in the work session, uh, we applied for through ACCG Risk Management under the uh, Cancer Prevention Program for a $5,000 micro grant to purchase a um, washer extractor, which is a 50, 50 cent word for a big wash machine that is special in that it removes carcinogens from the turnout gear that firefighters wear. Uh, we did receive that grant. I provide an example of what that machine might look like. This is not necessarily a machine that I'm looking to purchase. Tonight I'm seeking your approval to accept the reimbursement funds, because this is a reimbursement loan. In other words, we'll purchase, and they will pay us $5,000 once we present that, that uh, uh, invoice showing we have uh, purchased it. 
Um, yeah, I want to do a little more time research and make sure we're getting the best deal and the best machine we can get for the money. But this, I want to provide you with an example of what it looks like. It meets the NFPA standards. Um, and this is a non-matching grant, so we want to stay within budget. And uh, installation is going to be, I had Director Seymour and I tall installation of this type of machine is going to be very easy at the OES office. And I, I don't even know if we'll spend $75 on, on, on installation because we'll put it in ourselves. I mean, basically, we just need to wire the hot and the cold and, and, and run the, the drain into the existing drain line, plug it in, and it's ready to go. Okay, you heard the recommendation from Director Broom that we accept from the Association of County Commissioners the $5,000 grant for the purchase of this machine, washer and dryer machine. Is that a motion? So moved. That's second. second. Motion second. by Commissioner Tankerson, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? Chair here is done. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. The motion is carried. Thank you. Director Broom. Item number 20, basketball goals. Director Glaze is not here due to the, to the fact that he been around somebody or something. Yeah, we told him. So we told him just not to come, and I've asked Director Seymour if he would pick this up. Director Seymour. Yes, sir. As, as you know, um, we have um, talked about this in the work session, but we're looking to move uh, the current basketball court uh, at the recreation complex from its original site um, where it sits now next to the splash pad um, down to uh, where the tennis courts are at and, and do away with one of the tennis courts and put the basketball uh, court down there which is a better facility. It's lighted. Um, it's got a fence around it so it contains the ball and, and things of that nature. Um, so originally in the work session um, we had some goals that we looked at that I think were uh, about $7,600 for two basketball goals. Um, so after the work session and we talked we went back to BSN Sports um, to see if we could get a little better price on those goals and, and we were able to do so and I think you've got that price in your book which ends up being $5,905 and that includes shipping and um, the padding for the post that come down to the bottom for protection from you know players or kids running into those things and getting hurt. So we were able to reduce that amount um, significantly and um, I'm asking for approval tonight to purchase the two basketball goals in the amount of $5,905 from BSN Sports. Rick Seymour, y'all did good. You, you, you came up with $2,057 different than what we thought we had last week. Yes, sir. All right, you've heard the request from Director Seymour to go ahead and get these purchased so we can have them up and ready by probably spring of the year. Uh, is that a motion? I move, Mr. Chairman. Second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. The motion is carried. Item number 21 is budget adjustments uh, that goes through um, a b c d and e director Dolph. mr chairman commissioners uh, as we discussed uh last week at the work session we need to make some adjustments to our budget uh, due to uh, our uh, workers comp that we approved last month and so uh, the first item i'm going to ask the first budget i'm asked you to adjust is the uh, Water fund budget, the 2021 water fund budget. Uh, we need to uh, decrease that budget by $25.57 um, uh, for uh, a reduction in workers' comp. And so I'm asking you to approve that budget amendment. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Put together. Okay, we are. Uh I'm trying to find all this paperwork I got. We need the motion. We got a motion by Commissioner Clyde to accept it, to request it. To Finance director, is that second? Second. All right, motion by Commissioner Cloud, second by Commissioner Tankley. Any discussion on the motion? There is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Direct. Thoughts? Mr. Chair, the commissioners, the uh, second budget that we need to uh, amend is the uh, FY21 solid waste budget. 
Uh, we need to increase the expense item in that by $57.18 to uh, reflect changes in workers' comp. I'm asking you to approve that budget amendment. Okay, you heard the request on the solid waste. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. You got a motion to that second. That, motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion carried, Director Dawson. Mr. Chairman, third budget we need to adjust is the FY21 Family Connections uh, budget, and we need to increase that budget by $140.10 to account for the changes in workers' compensation. Asking the Commission to approve that budget change. Okay, you heard the request on the Family Connection budget. Is that a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. You got a second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know. Saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. Director Dawson. All right, Mr. Chairman, those are the easy ones, and I'm not exactly sure the best way to do this. Uh, we need to adjust. Um, uh, we need to make four adjustments relative to workers' comp in all of our general fund budgets. Um, and the First Amendment is um, I have provided for you and you have uh, this summary document of, of, of all of the budget amendments and the total uh, that needs to be amended for all the general fund budgets is $4,398.35. I would ask that the board uh, uh, accept that amendment to allow me to amend the general fund uh, as presented on this document uh, and the totality is four thousand ninety eight dollars and thirty five cents of additional expenditures okay i'll ask the clerk do you have a, do you have the information to, to get this in the minutes as to which what all's inside of that four thousand if, if not can't y'all get together and get that yes sir i have it okay you heard the request from director dawson they have motion that we Amend the general fund budget by four thousand three hundred ninety-eight dollars thirty-five cents. So moved. The second. I second. Motion by Commissioner Tankersley, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know. Saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. Director Dawson. All right, Mr. Chairman, I, and, and I was not clear. I want to make that amendment was specific to the workers' comp line item in each of those budgets only. All right. The next item I'm going to ask you to approve is to increase the uh, uh, revenue item for the development authority by $183.10 to account for changes in workers' comp. Uh, the county is the, uh, we act as the payroll agent for the development authority, and so they have to reimburse us for whatever we pay them, and so we need to increase. They will send us $183.10. I just need to, I need to increase the budget to, uh, to balance out for those dollars. They have a motion we increase the development authority budget by $183.10. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, he is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Director Dawson. Mr. Chairman, the next item that we need to, uh, line item we need to adjust is a general fund administration budget, the transfer out. Uh, we need to amend that by $33.48 uh, to allow for an increase for uh, the E911 budget. Okay. For workers' comp. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's for workers' comp, too. Right? Yes, sir. For okay. Workers comp. We're going to increase the administration by $33.48 transfer it out of the E911. Is that a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is that a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let me know. I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. Director Dawson. Mr. Chairman, uh, the last item for uh, for workers' comp in uh, the general uh, fund is uh, I'm asking the Board of Commissioners to reduce the uh, general fund administration contingency line item. Uh, by $4,248.73. Um, we have, um, we, we had some additional expense in the general fund, but rather than increase revenue somewhere, I'm, I'm asking you to reduce an expense line item to, so that the general fund balances out. 
So I'm asking you to reduce the general administration contingency budget by $4,248.73. Is it 48 or 78? I'm showing 78. Uh, I've got 73 on mine, sir. I got $4,278.73. Oh, you know what? I have a typo. It is. Um, hang on a second. That's the decrease of general administration contingency expense, right? Yes, sir. That's what mine says, 200. So what do y'all say? 4278.7. Oh, it's 4278. There's a typo on my side. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> we, uh, you heard the request from us that we decrease general administration contingency expense by $4,278.73. Is that a motion? I made a motion. Mr. Got a motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Tank. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. Director Doss. All right, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm almost finished. We got one more here in the general fund. Uh, this actually uh, does not require, uh, this is just simply moving of some funds. I'm asking, uh, we have a new corner, and I just uh, want to make sure that we're paying our corner or our, our corner's office uh, reflects the way we do it, uh, that we should do it. I'm asking you to. Uh, allow me to split the current single salary line item into to two items. One is uh, salary elected, uh, which would cover the state mandated salary for the corner, and the other one is uh, uh, salary uh, death investigation fee. Uh, the current budget has $7,500 for all of that. I'm just wanting to take that $7,500 and split it into its component units so that when we pay it out, we're paying it out and we can track it better. Do we need a motion for you to put another line item in that budget, or can you do that without? That is, that is really more for uh, for uh, letting you know what I'm doing. We do not okay. need motion. I got that. you. I got you. The, 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 I do need one more motion, and uh, Madam Clerk, I think maybe we left it out. Um, is we need to amend the E911 budget. Uh, it's in their books. It, it is okay. We need to amend the E911 budget. It should we be at the very make... front of yours. Very first item. Right. We need to amend the E911 budget. We need to make two amendments. We need to amend the revenue line item by thirty-three dollars and forty-eight. Forty-eight cents. Thirty-three dollars and forty-eight cents to which is the money coming in from the general fund that we just approved. And that we need to approve uh, increasing the workers' comp expense line item by the same dollar amount. So I'm asking you to approve those two budget amendments in the general the 911 budget for $33.48 relative to workers' comp. Okay, we can do this in one motion that we add that we add in the revenue column of $33.48 and we take away in the expense of same amount, $33.48. Is that correct? Yes, that's so that, in the, in the, uh, the, it's additional expense in the uh, in the workers' comp line item. Okay, y'all got that. Oh, is there a motion? So move, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion by Commissioner Henderson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. The motion is carried. Thank you, sir. All right, that completed that part of it, right? Yes, sir. Okay, item number 22 Network Infrastructure, Director Dawes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, as we discussed uh, at the last meeting, uh, we want to put together a, a committee of, uh, of commissioners and uh, my, uh, uh, Director Dockery and Director Seymour and myself to talk about uh, our network uh, uh, upgrades. Uh, in addition, um, the chairman and I reached out to, uh, after our last work session, the chairman and I reached out to uh, uh, County Administrator Scott Johnson in Columbia County to see if there was uh, potentially some consulting services we could get from their uh, IT staff. Uh, he did make his uh, IT director, uh, Michael Blanchard, available to us, and I've talked to him about some software uh, issues. 
as well as he recommended that we reach out to a company called VC3, V as in Victor, Charlie 3. Um, they have a lot of experience working with uh, rural local governments. They actually did some work uh, for Columbia County. We've scheduled a meeting. Um, Mr. Tankersley, I was wrong. I learned something at this meeting. Uh, hardware as a service is apparently something that you can do. And I said it wasn't, and, and so we're going to talk about the possibility of hardware as a service, which is basically they own it all, and we, and we, we rent it from them. We don't have to own it ourselves, and they take care of it. So. Uh, I'm asking the chair to uh, appoint that committee and, uh, and let us take a look at our, our, our core infrastructure and our network needs and, and bring something back to the board. Okay, and just for the people that maybe be watching, uh, this, is, this is something, the reason we appointed a committee, this is, a, this is something that really needs to be studied and looked at. We're talking about probably a quarter of a million dollars or maybe more expenditure in the infrastructure of the county's IT equipment, of all of it. Um, in the work session, I think we agreed that we would appoint a committee of, of, of five to study this and then bring it back to a work session, maybe a work session just for this um, at a later date. I'd like to appoint Commissioner Clyde, Commissioner Henderson, Director Dockery, Director Doss, and Director Seymour to serve on this committee. And uh, y'all take whatever time you need and just let me know when you keep me updated. Let me know when we need to have a meeting on. Thank you. Out of Jackson, that's what we will be doing with item 22 network infrastructure. Um, and Director Dawson, if you would just kind of take the lead on that as to when y'all yes, get meet set up. The clerk will notify uh, the commissioners. I hope all y'all commissioners check your emails pretty good. That's what happened today with one of our people not getting here for the thing. Yeah, be sure you check your emails, and the clerk, you be sure that if you don't hear from them that you notify them, get back in touch with them. And uh, if you'll just get with her, y'all set the meetings up, notify the people involved on the committee, mm -hmm. and y'all can, can go to work on it. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 23 is the Fort Gordon Alliance. We've been a part of this for the last few years. I am going to ask um, our representative, Curly Avant, if, who, who serves, represents Lincoln County on the Alliance, if he would maybe next month or the following month um, come to a work session and, and tell y'all all about what's going on with cyber. You know we split this with the development authority. It costs $5,000 for Lincoln County to be a member. The county commission pays $2,500. The development authority pays $2,500 for our $5,000. And we are asking for a motion to allow us to once again join for another year the CSRA Alliance on Fort Garden. Y'all have all of it in your book. You familiar with what we're talking about. Is that a motion? I made a motion, Mr. Chairman. Is that a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Now the motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Item number 24, that's going to be um, something we talked about again last week. As you know, we have the trees in front of the courthouse, uh, the oak trees and the cedar trees that are beginning to have served their life expectancy. I don't know when these oak trees were put in, but they've been there a long time. But anybody that wants to can walk by and look at them, they just did. Some of them got hollow places in them, but we got a terrible problem with limbs falling out. Some of them big as your arm. If it hits somebody's automobile or hits somebody walking down the sidewalk, we, we gonna be in trouble. What I'm asking is that, that uh, y'all give me and Director Seymour, the authority to, to work with some people to get prices to bring back to you on looking at the trees. I think I'm going to ask Robin and probably Brian Tankersley uh, to get the Corporate Extension Service involved a little bit on this too, but we, we would like to 
just go ahead and put this out and y'all to know it. I don't know that we need a motion. I said need a motion, but I don't know if we need a motion if, if y'all in agreement that we go ahead and start this process and, and get prices and what it would do and then we'd bring that back for a vote before we before we do anything. Is that does that suit y'all? Yes. So this is just informational purposes and we'll get we'll get started on that and get that get back with you on what we can do, but it's time to take a look at these things. With that said, we'll go to item number 25, which is the Board of Elections. Um, I got to eat stuff here. Okay, I'm really going to, I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. Jackson, if I can, for just a minute, if, if you prepared. Yes, sir. You, you drew the resolution so you would know more about it. And we do know, you know, we discussed this last week, so if you can just generally remind them what we're doing. Yes, sir. I'd be glad to, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, basically what this um, resolution does is the county commission would be requesting the uh, legislative representatives in the House and the Senate up in Atlanta to change the Board of Elections. I know there's been some confusion about appointments. And in essence, what this will do is it will continue to allow the same entities to make the appointments. It would be the Lincoln County Democratic Party, Republican Party, the Board of Commissioners, City Council of Lincolnton, and the Board of Education. What would happen is it will be specified when those appointments would be made that the Lincoln County Board of Commissioners and the Lincoln County Board of Education would have their representatives running concurrently with the governor's office. So January 1 of 2023, for that four year period as the governor serves, Lincoln County Board of Commissioners representative and the Lincoln County Board of Education representative would serve alongside the governor. The other entities, the City Council of Lincolnton, the Democratic Party, and the Republican Party would appoint someone to run concurrently with the president. So again, beginning at the next presidential election, beginning January 1, 2025, ending December 31, 2028, would be those three representatives. What would actually happen in this is that after the governor signs, if he does so, at that point there would be a new uh, board of elections created with new appointments to begin and last until the four year period start, as I just stated. Um, just there will be direct appointments from the county, the city, the Democratic Party, Republican Party, and the Board of Education. There will be no going through intermediate processes in this. That is basically it. It just kind of cleans up the old law. There were some vagaries in the old law, and this just makes it a lot cleaner and a lot organized, more organized. Okay, so what we're doing is staggering the terms where they won't all be you can't wipe the board out at one time. Yes, sir. And then we're just clarifying it to to, to the same people appointing them, up, but we're not going to the grand jury. We're just going to have it to where we would do that. This That's needs correct. to be moved on pretty quick where it can be dropped in the hopper. I did mention it to Senator Anderson, and uh, it takes Senator Anderson and, and to introduce it in the Senate and Representative Leverett to introduce it in the house then it has to be approved by both the house and the senate then it goes to the governor for the governor to sign it into law before it comes into effect so it has to be advertised in the paper and it's a process that it has to go through so the quicker we get it to them uh, the, the better we're going to be so we're not doing anything but just cleaning this up a little bit to, uh, to make it look right but we do need a motion to do this Clerk McKellar, I see at the end of this resolution you got a place for all of us to sign. Is that, have you got that for them to be able to sign tonight? Oh, they're going to have to come back. Is that, one, is that one 
we're going to do or we, you need to look at it more and then we get to come by and sign it? No, sir. That one is okay. the one I've prepared. I'll ask you, if you will, to let them sign it before it just pass around. They can sign it. If we approve it, is, I'm going to have to have a motion authorizing the resolution to amend the law to create the Lincoln County, Georgia Board of Elections. Mr. Chairman, I make that motion. Have a motion by Commissioner Tankersley. That's second. Second, second Mr. Chairman. Second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, like sign, and the motion has been carried. So if y'all can, if, if you can just send that around, clerk, they can sign it and get it back to you. I'll sign it in the morning. We'll get it filled out. And uh, we'll get this sent to our legislative delegation. Okay, item 26 is board appointments. If I can find all this stuff, I know I got it somewhere. Thank you, sir. Well, found it. I didn't find it. Well, I, I got. What I do with all this stuff? Anyway, let's move on. We can, we know what we got. It's uh, we have an appointment to the Development Authority District One, Commissioner Henderson. I'm not prepared. Okay, Commissioner Henderson will not appoint tonight. He'll postpone that till maybe February. District Two, Commissioner Collins. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I would like to appoint Stephen. Mr. Chairman, tell me his name. Uh -huh. I've talked to you about it, and I've told you if I start thinking about it. Stephen Dawkins. Dawkins. And I do apologize, but that does. That's what happens sometimes. It happens to me quite often. I'll be talking and forget. But anyway, we got a recommend a motion from Commissioner Collins for his appointment to develop the authority of Stephen Dawkins, represent District 2. Motion by Commissioner Collins is our second. I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Tankson. Any discussion on the motion? Good. Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 District 3, Commissioner Clyde. Yes, sir. First, I'd like to say thank you to Jason Rayford. He's been, uh, he's actually chair of the Public Authority at the moment, you know, but he's got a lot of family illness and it's taken a lot of his time. And uh, he uh, asked us uh, not to re uh, select him. So I'm selecting uh, Bobby Parker. Bobby worked with me for years, I think about seven or eight, and then he went to work for a large telecommunications company and uh, retired from there recently. He has 24 years. And uh, he's a large landowner, by the way, on the south side and everything. But he, with his telephone work, he knows a lot about industry and large business. And uh, he's right on the inside of a lot of things. I think he'd be a good appointment. And uh, he has accepted, if y'all desire to approve him and all that. So uh, he, by the way, I think uh, some of you know about the Williams Estate that backs up in the Grays Creek and all that area. Kind of wraps around Blackjack and comes back out to 220. But his family's had an investment in Lincoln County for a long, long time. So I nominate Bobby Parker. Okay, we have a recommendation and a motion by Commissioner Clyde to appoint Mr. Bobby Parker to the, to the Development Authority representing District 3. Is that second? I second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's done. All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. And uh, as you know, on all these appointments, the people that are leaving, we write them a letter and thank them for serving, to, for serving and those being appointed. We send letters telling them who's appointed them and what their terms are and this type of thing. So 
So they will be notified if they're leaving, and they'll be notified if they come in District 4, Commissioner Tankersley. Chairman Norman, I also would like to thank current okay. person that's uh, serving on that board, Chris Hyden, for his time and service. My new appointee is Tamage Bowers Reed III, a.k.a. Bo Reed. That's who you recommend? Yes, sir. Okay, you heard the recommendation and the motion by Commissioner Tankersley to represent Mr. Tankersley. Uh, all we all know him is Bo. He is Tavage B. Reed III. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Okay, I didn't even know that. All right, uh, we got a motion for Talmadge Reed III to serve on the represent District 4 on the Development Authority Board. Is that a second? I second. Got a second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair hears none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, and the motion's carried. All right, the at large post is, um, is a post that, that, that we point, and we've talked to, or I have talked to uh, some of the people there, and, and I would like to recommend that we appoint, if y'all would, Johnny Spratman. Uh, Johnny's been a, he, he never would serve on anything that we've asked him to do over the years because of his job. He's retired now, and he's willing to serve on the development authority. I think with his experience, he's also on the board of directors of the bank, um, that, that Johnny would make a good member to serve uh, on, on the development authority board. So I would make that recommendation, but I need a motion to get it going. They don't allow me to make a motion. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion. Is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Collins. We appoint Johnny Spratlin. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman, I was going to say Mr. we... Commissioner we, Clyde. We're changing the whole board. I mean, it's a pretty good turnover on the public authority board, isn't it? It's, it's about four of the seven, I think. Yes, sir. Yeah. Which may be good. We hope so. <laughs> All right, is any discussion? All in favor of the motion, motion let me know I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, the motion is carried. 26B is the library board, District 3, Commissioner Clyde. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to appoint a wonderful woman, uh, my wife. She's currently serving the answer, we serve again, and they seem happy. So, uh, She's yeah. happy, I'm happy. <laughs> Okay, we got a recommendation and a motion from Commissioner Clyde to appoint Jackie Clyde as the District 3 representative to the Library Board. Is that a second? Right. Motion by Commissioner, the second by Commissioner Tyson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. All, right. All opposed, like sign. Motion's carried. Library Board, District 4, Commissioner Tyson. Pat Crane. Okay. I've spoken to her. She loves being on the board. Okay, we got a motion by Commissioner Tankersley to appoint Miss Pat Crane, reappoint her to the library board, representing District 4. Is that second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Got to speak quick, Commissioner <laughs> Second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion? Chair, yes. here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying. Uh -huh. Aye. 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 All opposed, like sign, the motion's carried. Okay, 20C is the Planning Commission Board, District 1, Commissioner Henderson. I'm not prepared. For okay. All right, District 1, we have a, that is a, it's five members on that board. That is an at-large chairman's appointment, to me, which means he can come anywhere in the county and not just one of the districts. And I would like to reappoint. Jim Madison, I think he's the chairman of your, but no, he's not chairman. But anyway, he's, he's on there and I'd like to reappoint him. Is it our motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. A second? I'll second. Sir. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Henderson to, to reappoint Jim Madison to the Planning and Zoning Board. Any discussion? Chair, is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, like sign, and the motion is carried. 
The next one is the CSRA Unified Development Authority Board. We've talked about that a little bit. Mr. Kevin Wade was on it. I understand that through his father last month that Kevin didn't want to be back on it. Uh, they haven't met in over a year. I talked to Andy Crossan at the CSRA Planning Commission. Uh, they no longer, they, it no longer comes through them. So I, am, I have not got anybody that I'm ready yet to, so they, they hadn't met in over a year, so I don't think we got to appoint anybody tonight. So if that suits y'all, we'll leave that one open. No objection, that's what we'll do. Clerk, you got all these appointments to be able to get letters ready to come and go? Okay, all minds clear. With that said, item 27 is the one you've been looking for for about an hour and 35 minutes. I have motion that we adjourn. I'd love to make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? Chair hears none. All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, and we stand adjourned.